Covering news where you live, this is 5 News. Well, thank you for joining us here today for the latest news and weather where you live. I'm Joe Ellison. Now, it is Halloween weekend. We'll have a lot going on. There will be some festivities, some trunk or treats. We need a check of that weather. Let's get right to it with meteorologist Zach Scott. Hey, Zach, we need to look at that forecast. Yeah, Joe, and uh, it's important, too, because we do have a storm system that's moving in. Now, we're not expecting severe weather. This storm system's tracking a little bit further south than the one that gave us the good soaking Monday and Tuesday. We're still going to get some rainfall from it, but... We'll see more widespread rainfall staying more to the south and southeast of us. Now, as this system passes through Texas today, we'll have a chance for showers increasing for your Friday evening, Friday night. And then as this upper level low passes over Arkansas Saturday, that's when we'll have our best chance to see off and on scattered showers around the region. Again, a hit or miss shower is going to be possible as we go through your Friday, your morning, your afternoon. Best chance for a stray showers south of I-40. As rain chances increase during the evening, that's when we see our best chance of rain. So it's not going to be a washout all day. Rain chances increase south of I-40 for your Friday evening. Then overnight, we'll see scattered showers around, and we'll keep scattered showers around, especially our eastern and southeastern zones as we go through the day on Saturday. Walking through that future track radar one more time here for your Friday. Again, the best chance for some spotty showers. Uh, light to moderate rainfall will be south of I-40 through the day. We've got cloud cover that built in overnight. Breaks the sunshine to start clouds fill back in as we go through your Friday and then heading into your Friday evening. That's when rain chances really take off for us and we'll keep the scattered shower activity around as we go through the overnight hours. Again, we're anticipating showers for your Saturday. We could see a lingering shower early Sunday. Overall, we'll keep the clouds around highs in the 60s. Monday, Halloween day looking great. 60s and 70s for highs and temperatures dropping in the 60s and 50s for the evening. Joe. All right. Thanks so much, Zach. All right. Some more news for you. A Lavaca man pleading guilty in federal court to millions of dollars in health care fraud. U.S. attorneys announced a plea agreement with Billy Joe Taylor. He admitted to millions of dollars in fraudulent Medicare claims and also money laundering. It's a story we've been following for more than a year now. This is video captured last year when the FBI raided Taylor's home outside of Lavaca. Sentencing is expected to take place in four months. He faces up to 20 years in prison for the crimes. All right, now to an update on a story we brought you last month. Washington County prosecuting attorney has confirmed that 33-year-old Adair County Deputy Travis Adams pleaded not guilty to aggravated assault in Washington County Court. Now, you might remember Adams was arrested last month when, according to law enforcement, the off-duty deputy shot a man by the name of Justin Hellyer twice in the abdomen. The shooting happened on September 3rd in the rural Lincoln area. Police allege that Adams and Hellyer got into an argument when Hellyer pulled into Adams' driveway and parked in the yard. From there, the argument turned physical, eventually leading to Hellyer being shot. Adams' trial date is set for January 27th in Washington County. And of course, with early voting still happening and the midterm elections almost here, you can find more information on candidates and where to vote. Just visit 5newsonline.com or you can just text us the word vote to the number at the bottom of your screen, 785-5000. We'll send you a link to our local election guide. All right, now let's get you caught up on some things you might have missed this week. Thanks to technology, the Benton County Sheriff's Office has now identified the victims in three cold cases. Now, these are dating back to the 1980s and 90s. The Sheriff's Office says these three people were the only unidentified victims they had. And over the last few months, the Sheriff's Office has been able to give their loved ones at least some sense of closure. 5 News reporter Catherine Gilker has more. I can't be more proud than I am of the work that they've done uh, to get us to the point that we now have no victims that are not identified. For decades, three Benton County murder victims went unidentified. But now the sheriff's office has paired each with a name and a face. We'll never stop uh, when we have victims in these cases. And this is proof right here. And we're not done with some of these. And we hopefully will uh, have conclusions on all these. 
at some point very soon. The victim's remains were sent to Othram, a private lab that specializes in analyzing DNA from trace amounts of degraded or contaminated materials. Lieutenant Hunter Petray says the lab developed DNA profiles and generated genealogical leads, meaning it identified potential family members and then they identified the victims themselves. Cold cases uh, are easy to be forgotten. They can go in a box on a shelf and nobody ever look at them again. Can't always solve a case, but my opinion is you can always at least try to move it forward. You know, and with DNA technology that's come about, it's just great. The first victim identified is 33-year-old Fred James Grow. Five News Archive video shows the day he was found murdered in the Roberts Loop area of Garfield in June 1981. The body was uh, quite decayed uh, down to the skeleton. Uh, it was still intact and still clothed. Gro's body was exhumed from an unmarked grave in 2019 and sent to the state crime lab where they only developed a partial DNA profile. In July of this year, Othram discovered a possible identity, leading investigators to a relative who identified Gro after 41 years. 28-year-old Donna Sue Nelton's remains were found in Maysville in May of 1990. She had been shot and burned. Facial reconstruction couldn't be done because of extensive damage. Her remains were sent to Othram last April, and in August, the lab identified a relative who told investigators she had been missing since 1989. Investigators believe Nelton's killer was her boyfriend who died in prison while serving time for another crime. The final victim is 31-year-old John Douglas Rollins, Jr. Here's an interview with the late Sheriff Andy Lee when his body was discovered in October 1996. A fisherman discovered what appeared to be a body floating and uh, when we got up on shore they determined it was uh, that of human remains. Benton County Prosecutor Nathan Smith says there is no statute of limitations on murder. Generally the longer a case goes the more difficult it becomes for the state uh, to charge it but that's not to say that it couldn't be right if we had you know evidence that, that came out today we'd pursue it like any other case. All right, and another story you may have missed this week, we're taking a closer look at just how much the pandemic has impacted students' learning. The National Assessment of Educational Progress shows a big setback. Five News reporter Jose Carranza takes a look at the results in Arkansas and how educators are moving forward. The nation's report card for 2022 shows that students across the nation dropped scores in both math and reading since 2019, prior to the pandemic. It could be because you in person creates the environment where kids can do more meaningful connections with the teachers. They need that for learning or um, the way that we have to provide remote learning. Also, there are reasons of access. Not all the kids have access to the technology that was needed. And it's felt on both sides of the classroom. Teachers have also been hit uh, hard by this pandemic. Uh, their levels of the stress and burnout have been really high. They have been asked to teach in different ways, uh, in environments that uh, changing modes of, of teaching quickly to adapt to the pandemic. The findings in Arkansas are based on a random sample of 3,500 fourth graders and 3,600 eighth graders. It shows fourth graders in Arkansas have maintained the same reading scores while seeing a decrease in math scores. But for eighth graders, they've seen a decrease in both math and reading scores. Oklahoma also reported declines. Both states say these results stem from the pandemic. This has been hard both in students and in teachers. Gemma Zamaro is an education reform professor at the University of Arkansas. She says school systems are already implementing some solutions like tutoring and time adjustments. Thinking about the school day and thinking about how can we save more time for instruction. So sometimes they are thinking about extending the day or extending the school year. And she encourages parents to stay engaged too. When you ask parents in surveys how concerned they are about their kids, it seems that their levels of concern have gone down through the pandemic. I think it's important that parents are receiving the information to know exactly where the kid is and what the kid will need. All right, and in, in another story, if you've already made it to the polls, you may have noticed a few extra eyes watching you this year. They're called poll watchers, and they're there to make sure your vote is safe and counted. Jalissa Garza explains why there's more of them this election cycle. It's all hands on deck at polling locations across the state, working to make sure everyone's voice is heard. But it's not just poll workers, but watchers as well. 
a poll watcher is actually there on behalf of a candidate or a um, or a ballot issue, and they are there to simply observe um, the uh, procedures. Pulaski County Election Coordinator Amanda Dickens says poll watchers are an important part of the voting process. It helps us in knowing um, if there are any issues at a location or if procedure is not being followed the way it should. Both the Republican and Democratic parties of Arkansas say they're seeing more people interested in being part of the process because of integrity. The narrative of there being voter fraud and things like that has sparked that interest. But people feel like there was a lot of mistrust in the 2020 election. Sarah Reynolds with the Republican Party of Arkansas says they have hundreds of poll watchers across the natural state. So there has been that bigger push um, to be educated and how to become a poll watcher, which is why we did a lot more trainings this time around. Josh Price with the Democratic Party says they too have similar numbers and they continue to grow more people are introduced to the system and they get to see it and see that it actually is a very well run and secure system. Whether you're interested in becoming a poll watcher or just looking to cast your ballot, both parties are encouraging our Kansans to get to the polls and make their voices heard. All right, well, that's it for the stories that help headlines this week. Thank you for joining us here. I'm Joe Ellison. We'll see you right back here on Monday.